Interface Video, in cooperation with Fairfield Federal, presents Fairfield Today. Brought to you by Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan, Fairfield Medical Center, Fairhope Hospice and Palliative Care, the Frankie Smith Funeral Home, Fairfield County Adam H., Dagger Law, and the Fairfield County Board of Developmental Disabilities. Hello friends and welcome to Fairfield Today. Pleasure to have you with us. Uh, downtown we are at Fairfield Federal and uh, as, as we tape here today, it's a beautiful day on the square behind us, the bandstand. We're again, lots of activity coming up here this summer. We know that even now, Friday night bandstands just pack them down there and that's going on all summer and then the festival's not, uh, not far behind that. Uh, one of the folks we got on today is uh, somebody we've had on a few times, been fortunate enough to get her. She leaves a bu busy, busy schedule. <laughs> Miss Amy Carpenter. Amy. Thank you for welcome. having me, Paul. Thank you. And, and of course, if you've noticed her, she has her own show. Uh, do You love doing that? I love it. It's like my most favorite thing, of course, besides Hank's stuff. <laughs> Hank, <laughs> Hank will always be number always one. Always trumps, well, right? Uh, we'll talk about <laughs> Hank, but this is today's show, oddly enough, having Amy on, we're talking about Hank, and it's Hank's race. If you go mm -hmm. by the fairgrounds now, you can see on the fence a couple different places. They got the nice picture of Hank and, yep. and a nice uh, thing coming up. Uh, that's coming up this weekend? Yeah, yeah, yeah. July 8th. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It's been coming a year soon. already. It I seems. know. It's coming up fast. I always get stressed at this time of the year. I'm like, I've got so much to do and no time to well, do it. Well, you've got so so many things going on, uh, but but usually it, it revolves around Hank. And, right. and and for those who and I can't believe there are many who don't know, but right. for those one or two people who may not right. know, Hank was your boy. He was. He your was puppy. the love of my life. Your puppy. Yeah. So he was actually he started out as my sister's dog. And she brought him home, and we all fell in love with him sure, as a puppy. Sure. And he was so small that he, he was fit. a newborn when he yes, moved. he was so small he fit in the palm of our hand, oh my. and he was all head and paws and this little body, and um, so we of course all fell in love with him. And um, in 2013, he was diagnosed with sarcoma, which is a rare cancer of the connective tissue. And dogs get it five times more than people, and mm. children are the second most common really? to get it. So it's a, a cancer that a lot of adults don't know about. I mean, adults do get it, but not as often. It mostly affects dogs and children. And so we did everything just like people. We had surgery, radiation, chemotherapy. Um, I took him to Ohio State. They did, did a great job with him. but as much when, as they could do. Right. And then when they couldn't do any more, I drove him to Colorado sure. State. Sure. And we stayed there for almost a month, and they said they got 99%, but that was in July, and in November, middle of November, it metastasized. So, so, so often you see it come back, and it comes yeah. back with a vengeance. It does, and that's the thing about cancer that is just so heartbreaking. You know, you can fight it and everything, do everything right. I mean, even people you know who are healthy get cancer, and you wonder, why does this happen? Um, and so that's just my goal with our foundation is not only to raise awareness, but to raise money. And a lot of people don't understand that when you raise money to help dogs with cancer, it also helps people with cancer. It's called comparative oncology. And so dogs are 85% genetically like us. So if you can use something in them to help them with their Very cancer, similar. it helps people. And vice versa, the same types of uh, chemotherapy like doxorubicin, Hank was on that, that's what people get for cancer. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so that's what, when I first started out my mission, I remember um, uh, talking about how, you know, it was, it was it mostly focused on dogs. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, you know, this needs to be bigger than Hank. It needs to be about sarcoma. And then I was like, you know, it needs to be bigger about sarcoma. It needs to be about all cancers. Mm -hmm. And so that's why at our race, we try to celebrate all cancers, you know, and cancer survivors. I always try to have like a human cancer survivor and a dog cancer survivor. But we honor all cancers because, I mean, it's all the same evil. Sure, We're sure. all fighting the so, same battle. So Hank's race is coming up. It's mm -hmm. down at the Lancaster Fairgrounds right there in the track area where where you kind of take over the fairground for that day. <laughs> right. it's, it's become Hank's place. But uh, what time does that get rolling on Saturday? So um, 7.30 to 8.30 is registration. And, and then, this is for a run or a walk? Yeah, it's a walk run. So if you can only walk, you walk. If you want to run, you run. You know, it, that's what's nice. It's just it on the be, track. Yeah, okay. yeah. It's on the track and then throughout the fairgrounds, but yeah. it doesn't leave that. Yeah. And so registration is from 7.30 to 8.30. And then we have our opening ceremony at 8.30. And that's at Hank's Bench, which is on on the rising park side of the fairgrounds and that's my favorite part of the whole race because it's where um, it's just kind of like um, 
the time to talk about him and you know our mission and celebrate survivors and Tim Schaefer is always there to support us sure. with the bill that we're trying to pass to bring awareness and um, and then the race actually starts mm -hmm. at nine o'clock and then it usually goes till about 10 15 10 30 and then we start having the awards and then the speakers and we have lots of neat speakers this year like the sheriff's office police department you know and then we have like a bed bug dog lady that's going to talk to us yeah bed bug dog bed bug dog and we're going we'll talk about some other <laughs> things but it's amazing now how many things dogs are involved in exactly well we might well, let's just talk about now yeah. i mean i i can remember there was a, a, a young man here in town who'd been in a motorcycle wreck mac yeah. ray oh, was okay. his name and we had got the first uh, i don't know what we called it then assist dog yeah. that was trained for that and this has been probably 20 25 mm -hmm. years ago and we presented it to him and uh, this was the first one around here yeah. and now fast forward today and now as, as we were talking before we went on dogs do lots of different duties exactly they make our life so much better whether that's something physical a physical limitation mm -hmm. that people have whether it's an emotional you know limitation or even psychiatric dogs they have now. Well, you mentioned uh, a, a PTSD dog, mm -hmm. and that's for, I guess, men and women who yeah. have had that particular affliction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I had a, a one of my friends on my show, her name's Sean Slick, and um, a couple years ago, um, her son died of a drug overdose. And it was very traumatic to her, sure. you know, it was her only son. And so I had her on my show to talk about the experience from a mom's point of view. Mm -hmm. You know, I think a lot of people who are addicted don't think well, what will this do to my loved ones you know it's, it's more about them but they're you gotta left. think about yeah they're the ones left with the grief and she's still grieving and yeah. so after um, she lost him uh, her daughter Athena got her this puppy and her name was Miley because Miley Cyrus was nice. her son's favorite okay. singer right. um, and she was like I don't want that dog you know no like take it away and her daughter would not and she made her keep it and that dog is what saved her life and brought her back to life. Yeah, it gave her purpose. Wow. Gave her purpose, made her get up out of bed every morning. She had to, you know, feed it and water it and let it go out to potty. And it made her get out of bed. And it made her happy. You know, dogs just have a way of just bringing out your happiness. You and know? how many years now for Hank's race? Um, so we started it. See, I lost him in 2014. And I think the first year was... It was either 2015 or 2016 was so our first close year. close to a decade or yeah. it, we're, we're winding we're up to that. We're getting close to it. But uh, we might mention that this is actually Dr. Amy Carpenter. <laughs> and you never know where life will take you. Right. The turns it has taken. She is somebody that is, was all about education. Yes. Uh, yeah. Was it Amanda? Um, I went to Amanda um, oh. in, when I was in school. Yes. But I was over in Circleville. Okay. So, yeah. so she, she has that as her background. But... It's, it's funny how life can change, and when it takes hold, that's what it does, and now you're down this path, and, yeah. and really this is, uh, like you talked about, to all the sarcoma things and how it's, it's just enlarged yeah. to take in much bigger areas than just one dog and yeah. one, one incident. Yeah, and he was obviously my inspiration, and it'll always be in my heart about him, but that's what, um, you know, when I lost him, I actually saw a counselor. I was so sad. And she says, sure. Amy, this is... A family member. Yeah, Absolutely. he was a family member Absolutely. to me because I don't have children. Sure. And she goes, Amy, this is more about Hank. This is about all dogs. And this is about more than all dogs. It's about people with cancer. And so she started to help me see outside of my box, mm -hmm. you know, that I had to make a difference in more than just, you know, my dog and more just about dogs, but cancer in general. And after I had lost him, I was trying to do that kind of eat, love, pray thing to mm -hmm. try to help me through my depression. And so I had traveled to Washington, D.C. They had like the first canine cancer conference and they had um, doctors, veterinarians, scientists, all these researchers come. And I was like, I'm going to go to that. I'm going to, you know, I was trying to figure out, you know, why did he get it? What is mm -hmm. this cancer? You know, mm -hmm. why do dogs get cancer? You know, one in three, you know, and I just was trying to understand. And when I was there, I made myself go to the podium and I was shaking, you know, used to be more shy back then. And I said, what can I do to make a difference? I'm a teacher. So, you know, I don't have a medical background. You know, I have a PhD that makes me a doctor, but not medically. So what can I do to make a difference? And they said that you need to teach people. Mm. They said, that's what you do. And then that's like your forte. 
So take that and teach people because a lot of times, you know, they're, they're in the offices, you know, they're helping the dogs so they can't go out and spread the word about cancer rates in dogs and what is sarcoma and that dogs get the same cancers as people, you know. Uh, something I was just thinking, I've never asked you, and we've, we've talked on this subject lots of times. Mm-hmm. I've had Amy on, been fortunate to have her on a bunch of times. We've talked about Hank in different venues and different things. We'll talk about the big calendar. We've got some time. Yeah. But uh, one thing I want to mention is uh, all of, most of us, anyway, have lost a dog mm-hmm. or a cat. We've lost an animal. And almost the first question you hear from somebody is, are you going to get another yes. one? And apparently <laughs> the answer for you is no. You'd be all pretty way too busy yes I'm too busy plus it you know I got my hurt heart yeah, hurt so that's, much that's what you think it's hard to open up again but what I do I, I made a comp- compromise with one of my friends after I lost Hank she said you need to get another dog and I said I can't do that yes. and she goes well then you need to be a pet sitter she said oh. you have so much love to give so and, now you're and you need mom to right. lots of dogs I'm like an aunt I can yeah. love them yeah. And then give them back to their parents. Like I can a spoil them like a grandma. Like a but grandma. we'll go with Ann. That makes me sound younger. <laughs> that makes me sound younger. <laughs> right. Now, uh, before we get, we'll bring it around to the race again. We'll talk about that. But uh, new calendar is coming out. Yep. So we have our new calendar for 2024. I'm always off on my years. I'm always yes. a year ahead. That's right. Because I already had to have the calendar done by the end of May. Sure. So I'm always thinking and ahead. And there's always a theme. Right. And, and it so is. this year's theme is working dogs. Nice. Yes. And I got the idea because. You know, I think last year um, at our race, one of the speakers um, uh, said, you know, dogs make our lives so wonderful or dogs make the world a better place. And I thought, that is so true. And it kind of stuck in my mind. And I thought, I kind of want to feature that in our next calendar about, you know, what all they do. I mean, they do so much, like I said, from physical things to emotional, psychological things. I mean, just their presence makes things better like the year we did the calendar with the hospital and we had the therapy dogs from the hospital and they say that when dogs are around people in the hospital their blood pressure goes down yeah you know their heart rate settles they have that's out at hospice dogs come around exactly blood pressure and all that kind of stuff and puts a smile on people's face that and they react maybe they when they've never reacted to anyone in weeks you know and they just have that way of of bringing that out of people, you know, just be just by their presence. So this Saturday yeah. at the uh, Fairfield County Fairgrounds, which is about six blocks down here, it's Hank's Race, the annual mm-hmm. Hank's Race starts on, it's on a Saturday morning, registration is 7.30 begins. Yep, 7.30 to 8.30. Then it's pretty much a, a, a whole day of, uh, of events and everything themed around uh, animals, mm-hmm. dogs, sarcoma, right. grown into that as much yeah. as just being about dogs. So it, yeah. it's an exciting day. Yes, it is. And you know what I just thought, Paul? It's July 8th and it's our eighth year. July 8th and 8th year. That's yes. how we'll remember that. That's July how we'll 8th remember 8th. that. So uh, how much is the registration to get in on the so race? So if you sign up now online, it's $25, but the day of the race, it's 30 okay. So if you sure. sign up early, you get a discount. Very good. Yeah. Uh, it's a great cause down there. It really helps so many. Well, actually, you help a lot of people, too. You certainly help a lot of animals, but help a lot of people, too, because that's it's kind of all tied in. It all is tied right. together. Amy Carpenter with us, uh, Hank's Race, this Saturday down to Fairgrounds. Best of luck with that. Thank you so much, Thank Paul. You. And your calendar coming up. We'll have you back. Yes. All Thank right. you so Amy much. Amy Carpenter with us. We'll have more on Fairfield today in just a moment. You walked down the aisle and promised happily ever after. Sometimes happily ever after means ending a relationship. We know the conversations are not easy. Deciding what's best for you, your children, and your next steps takes work and communication. At Dagger Law, we know there are no monsters in a divorce, only people trying to find their way. Local, trusted, experienced. Dagger Law. The staff that have been here know what it takes. They've been on the other side. They see what it takes to make someone comfortable, to make the family comfortable, and really what kind of support they need. And so I think that's what really makes Fairhope what it is. You quit smoking and thought, that's that. But here's the thing about lung cancer. By the time you see the symptoms, it could be too late. There's a new scan that can detect lung cancer early when it's more curable. If you smoked, get scanned. 
Talk to your doctor or learn more at savedbythescan.org. My name is Allie. Um, I just became 14 years sober at the end of last month. Through the support of my family and friends, I got the courage to ask for help. And through treatment services and the recovery community, I was able to start my recovery journey. Now I get to work as a peer supporter and an addiction treatment navigator where I get to help the next sick and suffering. If you don't have family and friends that can support you right now, you can find those supports through treatment providers, the recovery community, and peer supporters like me. Every life matters and your recovery is worth it. This message is brought to you by the Fairfield County Adam H. Board. The Frankie Smith Funeral Home and Crematory in Lancaster and the Johnson Smith Funeral Home in Baltimore have a long and wonderful history of serving our community. Feel free to give us a call at 740-653-0652. Stop in and see us at either of our two locations, 405 North Columbus Street in Lancaster and 207 South Main Street in Baltimore. Respect for tradition, regard for change. Welcome back to Fairfield today. One of the kind of a more exciting things I've seen for a while is something that I saw online and it's called the Lancaster Herald and it's really new just a couple of months out there it's an online publication that really promotes Lancaster and Fairfield County and who better to tell us about that than the uh, person that is the publisher of the Lancaster Herald Chris Shire Good Chris, morning. welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity. Well, that's great. When I first saw this uh, Lancaster Herald, I thought, what is that? <laughs> and, and, and I'm not far past that right now. What <laughs> is that? I mean, because it, I was having a, a trouble pigeonhole it because it's, uh, it's not a publication in terms of a, a book or a magazine right. or anything like that. It's strictly online, but uh, it is really detailed. It, I just see tons of good stuff Thank you that's so in much. there about Lancaster and Fairfield County. Yeah. Is that your intent? That is absolutely the intent. I, I have worked in digital for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, my company that I still run, Madison and Fifth, named for the intersection where my house is in Lancaster, um, has been doing websites for people like Cameron Mitchell Restaurants, East Town Center, lots of people over the years. And um, so it's really I wanted to give back to the community and I wanted to use my skill set. So I'm really good at websites and I'm really good at content gathering and storytelling and that sort of thing. So I I felt like this would be a good natural fit for me to try to leverage all my strengths mm -hmm. and give something back to the community. And I also wanted to sort of course correct what I have seen happening in the digital landscape, which, which is, is so much negativity, so much unpleasantness. That's the news. Yeah. And so um, while I know it's really important to cover the news, um, I don't see this as an online resource for that kind of mm -hmm. um, hard news coverage. We're not going to see fire pictures right, or, right. or I, police calls. Right. And I did that work. Um, my, for my career straight out of college was as a broadcaster and a news journalist. I worked on KQVAM in Pittsburgh as a news, hard news broadcaster. So I get it and I see absolutely the value in it. And there's no you know, shot over the ballot, the Lancaster Eagle Gazette or anything like that. This is a wholly different sort of take on how we can share stories and it involves more bringing the community into that conversation not allowing them to be passive oh this is what they're feeding me today 
I've curated a group of what I call lead contributors who are mm -hmm. people that persistently provide on a weekly basis um, really interesting content. Michael sure. Johnson from the uh, Fairfield Heritage Association has done fantastic stories he's, every week. He's some kind of knowledgeable he person. He is tremendous. You don't know Michael. anything about Sherman, <laughs> that's your boy. Exactly, exactly. And uh, Penny Wassum, who's a certified financial Upstairs, planner. Upstairs right mm -hmm. here. Wonderful she has girl. been giving fantastic advice I've on things. I've seen things about her, yep. about suggestions, where to go. Absolutely, and this week her uh, her story is about how what you should think about if you're going to start a small business. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we're seeing a lot. And Linda Berge Disser from the city, sure. uh, the, the executive director or the director I've had her on the, the show. Was very yes. smart. Yeah, community development, talking about how to neighbor and all the good things that are happening in, in and around Lancaster. So, you know, we have core lead contributors and then mm -hmm. invite anyone. Anyone is able to write a story. And my only guidelines are it needs to be positive. It needs to be about a person, place, or experience that is in Lancaster or Southeast Ohio. I'll go even, you know, as far down as Logan and, and sure. into Athens. Sure. But, you know, this is... We have a culture in yeah. Southeast Ohio. There's yeah. a feeling, and and that's what I like to capture with it. So when I was concepting the what it would be, I came up with the tagline, by the people, for the people, which is probably not very original <laughs> if you know your U.S. I'd never history. heard it before. Never You're, heard it I before. give you credit for it. <laughs> but it was purposeful in that this is supposed to be by the people sure. for everyone. So uh, we kicked off with a really strong um, events calendar. I wanted that in place to one place where everybody could find out what's going on everywhere. And it's shocking how much is happening in and around Lancaster. On any given day, we have about 10 to 20 events listed a day from children's activities to you know karaoke nights at local hotspots to festivals and historical things and tours of our museums in Lancaster. Um, so it's always a great resource to look for that, and I give big kudos to Karen Schul, who um, has been running that for me, and she, she's actually the only paid employee at the Lancaster Herald, because I couldn't put that job on anybody without giving them some sort of pay. And that's how we're funded at this point, is that I'm pocketing it out of my own, but we'll be launching um, display advertising shortly. That was, gonna, that was yep. where we were going to lead here. Eventually, that's kind of how yeah. your intent is to some online advertising. Yes. And so we have a classified section that I launched a couple of weeks ago. I, you know, it, it's tough for me because I want people to be focused on the great stories that we're telling. So I haven't really pushed information about the advertising opportunities in my online resources like Facebook and, and Instagram and that sort of thing. Um, but I do hope that that gets out because we may not survive if we don't start to gather some traction with that. So I'm hoping that people will see it as an investment in the entity and not just, you know, and, 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 you know, if you develop an appetite in the community where people, oh, I really like that, maybe that in itself will be a selling point right. for future advertisers. Right. Well, and I would say I have absolutely, and I invite people who are business owners to write a story about your business. Tell us, tell the community about your business. Mm -hmm. That I'm happy to do, you know, if you're a community contributor and you're just telling that story, that is absolutely a submit your story submission. And you can find the link to submit your story at the bottom of every page of the website. It mm -hmm. just says submit your story, you hit that, and you have to supply me with at least a couple of pictures, but you know. Well, we, we talk about the Lancaster Herald being an online publication. I've seen it on, uh, Facebook, mm -hmm. and I'm certainly no tech guru. <laughs> you know, I uh, I can get to Facebook, and that may be the limit of what I can right. do. But I've seen lots of things on there about it, and and on there people then talking about it. Where else can people view this? It really is a just a website portal. I okay. don't. I have not turned it into an app. So um, what's the website? LancasterHerald.com. Dot com. Okay. Yep. Even if you accidentally put in thelancasterherald.com, you'll end up there. Sure, sure, <laughs> sure. Well, well. Again, I think it's it's generating some buzz. Oh, uh, I've seen you speak it, uh, and I'm sure you're glad to do that. Go out mm -hmm. and uh, kind of pump up the, uh, I won't say publication, but the <laughs> online entity that it is, the Lancaster Herald. I'm talking with Chris Shirer. Chris is the uh, publisher and 
chief cook and bottle washer yes. <laughs> for uh, the Lancaster Herald, a, a strictly online publication, LancasterHerald.com, on Facebook. You can find it on there, and it, and it really, as she's indicated, uh, just talks about the positivity of Lancaster and Fairfield County, and maybe even a little beyond that, maybe perhaps a little southeastern Ohio. Uh, things here. So are you getting some things in from say to Logan, Southern Ohio, Southeastern Ohio a little bit? Are they, there some interest down they there? They have not popped quite as quickly as I, I had hoped for, but I didn't want to close the door on sure. it and make it seem like they weren't welcome. I, I, I want it to be a broad platform. I, I'll tell you what I think gets the most play, which is so much fun for me, is the finds and favorites section where we did a story about um, the ham salad and pimento uh, cheese spread. Oh, a day from Fred's Market. Well, I just bought some yesterday. I'm oddly telling enough. you that Fred's hit made me a hit <laughs> because I did a story about that with a picture with crackers and everything. And how do you like your Fred's? And it went nuts. Yeah, that's a that's a, yeah. such a pipe of. I grew up born just about two blocks from where Fred's oh my is. Gosh. When I was a kid, it was called Lane Brothers okay. Market. Two older guys, at least in my mind, were older guys. and But now it's evolved into Fred's, but everybody goes there to get the uh, the ham loaf, mm -hmm. the pimento cheese, and the ham salad. It is unquestionably right. as great as there is. And obviously your, your viewers think so too. Oh, absolutely. When I had, you know, I did a little stint as a retailer here in town and I owned Rabbit and Rocket, which was a stitch store down at the corner um, where Fruit Passions is now. And it's very kind lady, Barbara Roach, saw how I know hard Barbara, former I, principal. Yes. I know, uh, again, from Logan. Right. She's from Logan. So I was working so hard to get the shop up and running, and she was one of the first people who came in the door and was so kind and supportive. And she said hello, and we had a little chat, and she left. And about a half an hour later, she came back with Fred's. She had a ham salad and a pimento <laughs> cheese spread and Ritz cracker box. And she said, if you've not had this, you need to have this, and you need something to eat, sweetheart. You've, You're not. <laughs> you have a lifetime friend now in Barbara. Oh yes, she is fantastic. It's it's that, and those are the kind of stories that I want to sure. you know stir up. For just people. organic. It's just it's yeah. just kind of grown out of this community. Right. And I, I've seen some things. Maybe Penny Wassum had a, had one in there about uh, things to do or, yes. or things twenty things to do close. To, summer budget things yeah to do maybe on that's a, what it was know, but i mean no, everybody's summer. looking for something yeah. like that now no everybody doesn't have to go up to port right. clinton to do something there are things around there you take your kids to and yeah. in this county as you said it every day every week it's amazing mm -hmm. and we have so many people that are activated in the community doing things that they just need a little extra bump of the word getting out about sure. things so i i i see us serving that purpose very, very deeply and, and want to continue that. Well, it's it's an exciting thing. I'm so glad I could have you on. Thank we'll you. We'll, we'll make this a, a date periodically to I would get love up that. because I, I just see this thing is growing exponentially Thank you. And, and just doing very well. And I mean, it, it's I think there's a niche for this, mm. a place for it. I'm sure you feel that or you wouldn't have launched it. But I, I think there is a place that people want to read this. You know, I mean, there, like you say, there's a place for squad runs. It's not here. Right. But there's a place also to talk about the, the good. Let's talk about the squad runners. Yeah, that'd be good. You know, and perfect is, people. We love those guys. Chris Shira, who is the publisher of the Lancaster Herald, thanks for being on. Uh, it's an exciting time. Just launched a couple months ago, and uh, uh, LancasterHerald.com. I find it on Facebook. If I find it, most people can. It's 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 a, a wonderful read on there. Thank Your you. website is a. Uh, very intuitive and uh, a lot of fun stuff on there. So congratulations and uh, we'll have you back. Thank you. We've had a good start. I just found out last month's statistics, we had um, 17,500 visitors. Nice. Yeah. It's a good start. Yeah. It's a good jumping point. For Very good jumping go. point. Lancaster let's, Herald let's keep is it. the publication. <laughs> Thanks for joining us in Fairfield today. Interface Video in cooperation with Fairfield Federal presents Fairfield Today. Brought to you by Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan, Fairfield Medical Center, Fairhope Hospice and Palliative Care, the Frankie Smith Funeral Home, Fairfield County Adam H., Dagger Law, and the Fairfield County Board of Developmental Disabilities.